Hi everyone, I'm back with another pregnancy video. I just found out I'm pregnant with baby number two and wanted to do a video that discusses how you can use your HCG levels to determine what week you are and potentially other factors having to do with your pregnancy. So this was really applicable to this pregnancy because I found out I was pregnant immediately after I had stopped breastfeeding. So I didn't have a period to date my pregnancy. So my doctor didn't want to have me come in until she was positive I was eight weeks. So she had me do some HCG testing. And from then on, I did a lot of research on how to use these levels to determine different factors about your pregnancy. So if you don't already know HCG, you already have a little bit in your body, pregnant or not, but the HCG levels boost dramatically when you become pregnant. And when you take a pregnancy test, the HCG levels is what the test will look for when determining if you're actually pregnant. So if you have this amount, five or less HCG levels, you are negative, you're not pregnant. Anything between five and 25 is considered a gray area, but most even really sensitive at home tests will not give you a positive unless you're at least at a level 25 or higher. So I recommend the Acumed tests on Amazon. They're super inexpensive, super accurate. And if you look into the tests more, you can see if the tests will detect at this level. Some of the ones that say they are really sensitive don't detect a positive pregnancy until you're at about level 50. So you wanna make sure you're reading your packaging and I will slide over and include a link to the test that I recommend. So these super sensitive tests that detect this level of HCG 25, um, they will detect a positive pregnancy test at about the time of your missed periods, which means you're already four weeks along. So if your doctor does not know how far along you were, like it was in my case, they will not just test your HCG level one time, but they'll typically do a series of two or three tests. That will tell them how quickly your levels are doubling and give a good indicator of where you are in your pregnancy. So for example, um, the first four weeks of your pregnancy, the HCG levels will double every 48 hours. So chances are you're going to be getting tested every couple of days because they want to see if your levels are doubling or if you might be farther along. So for example, after six weeks, the levels double every 96 hours. So they're still increasing, but they're not doubling as quick as they were in early, early pregnancy. So the levels peak and plateau slash decline at about 11 weeks. So if you were very far along and found out very late about your pregnancy, this might happen to you. Your levels may be very high, but if they do multiple tests, they'll show that they're actually peaking, plateauing, or potentially even dropping. And the reason that morning sickness um, tends to go away at this point is because your HCG levels have stopped increasing which I read online and um, is one of the main reasons that causes morning sickness. So it all ties in together. So um, the other thing my doctor was interested in, um, if you're not very late in your pregnancy, but your HCG levels are plateauing, they're rising very slowly for the point in your pregnancy that you are, it could be an early sign of an ectopic pregnancy or potentially a miscarriage. This isn't necessarily true, but um, it is an indicator, you know, if you're in the four to six week period and your HCG levels have plateaued, they're dropping or they're very slowly rising, this might be a potential case. Um, if your HCG levels are very, very high for the week in pregnancy that you are, it could be a potential of a twin pregnancy. I also read that baby girls give a higher HCG level notoriously than baby boys. 
So if you take a look at the HCG chart that I'll slide over, it will give you a range of an average HCG level at that week in pregnancy. So you're going to want to compare where, what range you're in. You may fall into numerous ranges, but when you get that second or third test, you'll be able to see, okay, are the numbers doubling or are they not doubling? And if I were to plug my one, two, and three testing or my first and second test in here, which range, ranges would make sense? My last note is that the ranges are the normal ranges, but they do vary so much. So for example, in my pregnancy, based on my numbers, I thought I was three weeks farther along and I very, very closely looked at the charts and I asked my doctor, I said, um, cause I finally did go in for a scan and she's like, you're only six and a half weeks. And I said, oh, because based on the HCG testing, um, I should be about nine weeks. And she said, yeah, I'm seeing that too. Um, but it varies so much from individual to individual. So take that with a grain of salt that it's not a definite thing to tell you twins, ectopic, miscarriage, or exactly what week you are, but it is one indicator doctors will look at before you go in for a scan. And before eight weeks in a scan, it's very hard for a doctor to determine how far along you are. So this is just one indicator that they can use to kind of measure how far along you might be if you didn't have that last dated period. The last thing I wanted to mention is the hook effect, which I did another video on and I'll slide over. And what the hook effect is, is if you take a positive pregnancy test around four, five, six weeks, it will typically come back positive. But if you're farther along when those HCG levels have risen, risen so much, you may get a fainter positive line or it may not be there at all. And that's not something to be concerned about. You could be experiencing the hook effect where the HCG levels are so high that the pregnant it's throwing the pregnancy test off. Um, and also I did look to see if there was any at home HCG level testing um, outside of going to the doctor and getting your blood drawn. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any HCG at home level testing um, that you could purchase online. So this will be a test that you will need to get your blood drawn. It typically takes about 24 to 48 hours for the results. And then you can kind of make a prediction from there. So I hope this video was useful. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.